So much cleanup to do, Desi. Are you going to help me? we got a lot of weeding to do. Look at it. Are there any buds on my hydrangeas? Oh, these are my favorite lime hydrangeas. They're so gorgeous. And look at there. There's some buds. I got some buds. Everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I so hope you had a good week. I had a very good week. But I got a letter from one of you beautiful ladies and you were talking about getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and asking yourself, what am I going to do today? And you just went blank. And you felt lost and unfulfilled. And before I wrote back, I wanted to do a little research. And I found a study where they, they studied thousands of women that were in their 60s and 70s, and some in their 80s. And they focused on their happiness, their productiveness, the things that they struggled with the most. And it was so fascinating. It took me three days to get through it. but. They focused in on about seven different things that these women reported that they struggle with. Some have conquered it and some haven't. And I thought, oh, this is probably one of the most interesting videos I have ever had the honor of doing. And I cannot wait to share these things with you. And I also want to hear your feedback. You know, maybe you're going to hear some of these things and go, oh, no, that's not me. Or, oh, yes. I can so relate to that. I just couldn't put it into words. That's how I felt. What so many reported was this intense and profound feeling of being disconnected from the world. And I know I have felt that too many, many times. I mean, we are a society that we love TV, we love films, we love books, and we're not usually depicted in any of those things anymore. Those were things we used to relate to. Remember in our 30s and 40s, you know, a movie would come out and, and the whole movie would be about a woman just like me and we could relate to it. And they don't do movies about a 73-year-old woman falling in love. Feeling disconnected isn't just from the media or the entertainment world. It's how we live every day when we walk out our front door. You know, how we pay for our groceries is always different now. How, you know, putting gas in our car. You know, we have to learn technology, technology that we're not familiar with. As we get older, you know, there's two types of intelligence. And the intelligence that allows us to learn things is compromised as we get older. We can still learn things, it just takes 10 times the amount of concentration and energy as it used to. What we have going for us though is the crystallized intelligence, which means that we could solve problems at 75 years old that we couldn't solve at 40 
because every experience we've ever had is stored and we draw on that intelligence. Okay, that's great. <laughs> But when you are in a world that's changing so fast with technology and you're having a little bit, a little bit of trouble learning your phone or maybe how to turn on that smart TV when you're, when you're sitting at home, it's just not the same. Sometimes when I'm at the grocery store, I'm trying to you know, figure out the card machine and I'm kind of stumbling around. And I always have this joke that I tell the cashier, you know, like, I'm still living in the 80s and I'm still ready to write you a check. And she always will reply, check, what's that? It's just, it's a little joke that helps me cope with feeling disconnected. And even though it sounds like such a small thing, it adds up. It really does add up when you order that new toaster and it's a smart toaster, we don't even want to go there. The second thing that they focused on in the study is women felt almost haunted by family members that they felt did them wrong, either as a child or in their adulthood. So they felt they just couldn't forgive family members. And they reported that this depressed them, that it took their energy, that they would be happy and then they'd suddenly think about something their brother did to them 30 years before and they'd get angry. When I was in my 30s and 40s, I would wake up in the morning in a good mood and suddenly I would be thrown into a bad mood because something would happen that would trigger a memory where I would be angry at my mother's brother for hurting me as a child and it would go, I'd, it would be on a loop and I would get more angry and more angry and more hurt and feel it was so unfair and how could he do that to me? How could he do that to a child? And it was ruining my life. And I did seek therapy for that. I had no other way to deal with it. I had to, I had to go to a therapist. And it was a long road, but I got through it. And I tell you what, at 69, <laughs> it's not an issue. I, I never think about him. I never think about uh, that particular time in my childhood. You know, the opposite of love isn't hate. The opposite of love is indifference. And that's exactly what I have. I mean, that person has been dead for, I don't know, 14 years. And I'm indifferent. <laughs> that's, that's just the way it is. But forgiveness is something different. Can I, can I really look at the camera and talk to you and say, I forgave the person who hurt me as a child? No, I can't say that because I never have. And you have always reminded me forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for me. But I still haven't gotten there. But I'm so indifferent and I never think about it. So it just doesn't seem like it's an issue for me but maybe something that maybe I should work on. I don't know. There's so many other things I need to work on, but you cannot ignore that when you have a problem with a family member that the best thing to do is deal with it. And maybe, maybe you'll, you'll seek a relief, perhaps like I did and have therapy, or maybe just just talk to that family member. If you're estranged from that family member, give it a go. I know I did a video on estrangement and it got a gazillion views and there were so many of you that are estranged from a brother, a sister, a daughter, a son, and the pain that you feel, there are no words to describe it. So I know problems with family members can keep us from a rich life that we deserve. I'm so 
Zoe, Desi? Where'd Zoe go? You look so sad without Zoe. Oh my goodness, once I put up my privacy fence, you won't see her anymore. Maybe I should rethink that. I guess you really don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out the next one. Missing a spouse, missing your husband, missing your life partner. It hurts and it causes a tremendous amount of turmoil in someone's life if they don't come to terms with it. And they found as women got older, sometimes how they looked at themselves as a single woman, well, that was very difficult for them. They, they reported in the study that so often they saw themselves through their husband's eyes. They saw themselves through that loving partner's eyes. And now they were seeing themselves, how? Looking in the mirror and just sometimes remembering those, those loving words. I love you, baby. You look like a million bucks. I can relate to that. Missing, missing that person that loved me. When you lose a spouse, you don't lose the memories. You don't forget all that love. I, even though my ex-husband, he passed away three years ago in, in August, but in many ways, I feel like, you know, we never really did divorce. We just separated. And I remember when I first moved into my house here, I felt like he was with me every day all the memories of all the houses we had bought together and moving in and, and arranging furniture together and how much fun we had. And we always had a little table where we would have coffee in the morning together every single day. And, and at night too, we'd have a nightcap together. But it was just a little table for two. And it was it was just our special time together. And we did that, I don't know how many years. So when I moved into my little house here, I'm looking at my little sunroom. And instead of, you know, putting porch furniture in there, like a normal person, I bought a little bistro table. Not knowing why, but I just, I thought, well, that'll look great there in the morning. I can get up and have coffee and read a book and overlook my backyard. <laughs> and then it finally dawned on me this winter, oh, dear Lord, the reason that I have that little table there for two, that's, that's for Bill. We're losing someone who loved us, who, who loved us maybe even more than a parent and they're gone, and I don't think of it as something that we have to get over. We have to put it in its proper place. But the love will always be there. Not even death can stop love, but we go on. And if for no other reason, we go on because they loved us and they'd, they'd want us to go on. That's how I see it. That's how I have to see it. I am not alone. He's here now. Sometimes I think he's gone, but then he comes back in the morning or at noon or in the night. A bird no one wants, but he's mine. My bird of grief. He doesn't sing that bird swaying on the bough just for me. Oh my goodness, look at that on my porch. That's a beautiful little sofa for the sunroom. I finally took the step and got some real furniture for, for the back room. But I think I'll just keep my little bistro table for now. This study was one of many that has shown that the older a woman gets, the less she feels that she can express her emotions or even let herself feel her emotions. Stiff upper lip, don't, don't complain because then you're whining, then you're not grateful. And I have noticed this 
with some of the older women that I know from my neighborhood that they do not ever want to talk about emotions. And they do talk about being grateful a lot. And I am grateful for my life. And I know you all are very grateful for your life. But I swear, I could, I could be shot in the leg and I would say to my neighbor, oh my gosh, this hurts. And she'd say, oh yeah, okay, you're shot, but be grateful. <laughs> swear. Okay, we got the grateful thing down. We, we, we have that down. But that doesn't mean that we can't express our emotions. If we're having a bad day, we get to say we're having a really bad day. But another thing that they found is the women who did want to communicate, the women who did want to talk about the struggles in their life, they didn't have the words. They, they didn't have the tools to express how they were feeling to someone else because they didn't feel that way in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, or their 50s. So they never developed the language. So that lack of knowing a language that would let somebody know, hey, I'm in trouble, or hey, I need some affection today. Hey, I need some love. I need somebody to just understand that I'm worried about my future without my husband. Or I haven't talked to my son in six months, and I'm worried about our relationship. I feel lost. I feel like I don't know myself anymore. I'm, if you don't know the language, that might help you. That, that might enable another person to help you or, or find a path for yourself. Then, then where are you? Yes, in your silence, you're grateful. But sad is sad. And whether you, you can, you know, maybe find a language through poetry, maybe writing some songs, maybe just writing a short story or what the heck, a novel. Or maybe just starting a little YouTube channel and just going on and on and on about anything. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> the language of communication. It's a beautiful thing. I know quite a few older ladies that are going back to college. Ooh -hoo. Just think of the possibilities. So many possibilities. Oh, how cool. My moms are coming back. That's so cool. Oh, I love having my own house. When I gave up on my dreams, I gave up on myself. And without a destination, I had no path. I just floated. And I didn't change until I saw my goals. And then I had a map, I had shoes, and I had hope. So many of the women talked about their lack of discipline. And they said it was sort of a gradual thing. In other words, they, they went into retirement and they didn't have to get up at seven in the morning to go to work. So. They kind of slept in and they really enjoyed their life. But one thing kind of led to another. And so they let a few things slide and then a few more things they let slide until they felt they didn't have any discipline. They didn't have the self-control that they used to have. And it was amazing that in the study, I read the same thing as the letter that I got from the subscriber who wrote me that she'd get up in the morning and she'd ask herself, well, what am I gonna do today? Blank. And that's how they felt, that somehow there was no discipline. That, oh yeah, there's a, there's a fair at, and it starts today. And I have to be there at nine o'clock. It's gonna be a wonderful, it's the state fair. and. I, it's, it's just, it's here in my city and I can't wait to go, but you never go. You just, oh, I got to do this and oh, I got to do that. And oh, there might be people there. I know I don't really want them to see me. I've put on 50 pounds. So there's that. 
Do we lack discipline as we get older? I don't know. I know for me, I started on a diet. I started, I hate to call it a diet. I, I, it's a, just a new way that I'm eating that's much healthier. And I dropped seven pounds the last few months, but I still can't believe that my weight got as high as it did. How, how did that happen? It's as if I was 120 pounds and then I looked in the mirror and, oh, <laughs> who's that? I just, how, how did I let that happen? I do have to truly work on my figure and my weight now. And I'm not used to that. That's not how I see myself. I swear I could be 350 pounds and I would still feel like, oh yeah, I'm skinny. <laughs> but I had to have discipline. I, I had to have discipline to say I have to change for one thing. I mean, this can't go on. I got a wedding I have to go to in August. I cannot be 25 pounds heavier than I was five years ago. I, I can't do that. And it feels good. And, you know, at first, those first three weeks of dieting were really hard. Well, now it's a lifestyle. Anyway, I don't want to go on and on about my diet. <laughs> Discipline. The discipline to go to bed at a certain time and get up at a certain time, I, I flounder with that. I, I kind of float. I, I'm not my own best parent here. I, I, I float too much. I don't have the self-discipline that I would like. I had discipline when it came to, you know, not being in debt, making wise decisions, um, maybe seeing red flags with certain men that I went out with and not getting involved in a relationship just because I'm lonesome. I made a good decision. I had some discipline that, yes, it would be great to have somebody's arms around me, but at what price? I, okay, so I'm fine with that. I do have discipline, but not in all areas. The last thing they talked about is how much they wanted to change their life because they didn't feel fulfilled. Whether they were 65, 70, 75, 80, they, were, they felt like there was something missing in their life, but they didn't know what. And I, I can relate to that very much. So I keep very busy and I have so many wonderful things going on in my life but it's certainly not perfect. I I don't think that my life is as rich as it could be. And I was reading the other day, we're one decision away from a better life. We're one decision away from having the thing we've always wanted. What is my dream? My my dream came true that I would that I would be here in this city in my little cottage and I'm so happy. But what's my new dream? You always have to be moving forward. And I really thought about it. You know what my dream is? My dream is to have a volume of poetry. Good poetry. Daring poetry, brave poetry, poetry and prose and little short stories. And that's hard. It's emotional. It's, it rocks the boat. It's not a smooth ride. Let's just say that. But it is a dream. It's a dream that it means so much to me. It's the dream I had when I was 18 years old. It's the dream I had when I was 28 years old. I loved music and I loved playing music, but literature was everything. That's why I named my channel here, Little Poet. You're one decision away from changing your life, changing how you look, changing how you feel, changing maybe where you live. I have a lot of fantasies about you know being at my uh, the graduation for my grandson or with my granddaughter you know as she's going to prom those are wonderful things that i fantasize about but for me personally here i am i i stand alone 
I came into this world alone and I'm going to go out alone. And I realize that so much of my happiness has to be how, how much of a purpose do I feel like I have in this world? What's the reason I'm getting out of bed every day? So I think there's just something, there's something waiting. Do you ever feel like that? That there's just, you're happy, everything is okay. You're fine, you're okay. Things are good, you're grateful. <laughs> but there's just one thing, just one thing that you feel you have yet to do. And by George, you will do it. I hope people don't misunderstand. The survey wasn't saying that women over 65 are basket cases. But what it was illustrating was that we women of a certain age, we face certain struggles that are unique to us, unique to our age. It isn't that we're unhappy. It's just that we want more. As women, we want everything for ourselves and for others. And we'll find a way because that's what we do. That's what we've always done as women. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And did you see Zoe, Desi's girlfriend? Oh, isn't she cute? If you get a chance down below, could you really just give me some feedback on, on some of those things that the women said in that study? I found that just beyond fascinating. <laughs> Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, all right? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here. You probably think the song is about you. You're so vain, you're so vain. You probably think the song is about you, don't you?